Hi everyone, we are very much in the month of March, so it's time for another piece of floral word art, or I should say probably foliage word art. We're going to be using some masking fluid to cut out the shapes of the letters of March and then paint some gorgeous greenery over the top. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right, so here's one I prepared earlier. My page is six inches by seven and a half inches and my lettering is three centimeters tall. So what I did is I drew two parallel horizontal lines to get the top and bottom. And then I also drew a line that hit the bottom edge of those midpoints there. And then using my ruler, and you can also see quite a lot of sketching and rubbing out and making mistakes. I came up with my own sort of simple little block letter font and then just lightly rubbed it out with some with with my rubber. So we're going to use masking fluid today. Um, I use a uh, Winsor & Newton watercolour art masking fluid. For those of you who've not used this before, um, you can find out all about it in my watercolour quick fixes. We've got a whole video about masking fluid. But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint, I'm going to colour in all of the lettering with the masking fluid, we're going to let it dry and then it means we can paint over the top and it will keep those letters masked. So I'm just filling in the lettering with the masking fluid. Um, so I have a separate palette for it and also I use an old paintbrush that I don't use for watercolour anymore. Um, you can get a, a specialist of applicator but at the same time, an old paintbrush that you don't mind sacrificing will do just fine. So I'm just going right up to the edges and then we need to wait until this is dry, until we can paint over the top of it. Um, don't try and speed up the process with a hairdryer. Um, it can sort of mess with the with the drying process and make it not quite do what it's meant to do. So we'll just wait and then we can get painting. So I am back with my regular painting setup. The masking fluid has dried. I'd say five minutes is um, a fairly standard drying time for natural drying. So it's just a tiny weeny bit tacky, um, but it is holding its shape whilst I am just tapping it with my finger to check. So this means we can now paint over the top of it. Um, I decided for March's, uh, well I always call them floral word arts, but we're going, we're going foliage based this month because this is the moment where it really feels like spring springs out of the ground and we suddenly find ourselves surrounded by lots of overgrown greenery and lots of people go, oh gosh, I need to mow the lawn all of a sudden. So it just felt like a nice way of doing it and also just a nice sort of alternative approach to our floral word arts. So um, I am just going to begin. I've got a um, size zero brush. I've got here all the smaller sized brushes from the set that I sell, so four tenths, um, size two, size two tenths, it's coming around somewhere, there it is, and size four, so all the smaller brushes. You also get um, a range of uh, size six and size eight. So you see what happens is you paint over the top of it and it just bubbles up like that, beads up. And um, the only thing is you sort of want to try and avoid sticking your hand on the masking fluid sections too much just because they're sort of a bit sticky and things like that. I'm going to start off with a nice fern. <laughs> it's so squeaky, it's a funny, it's a funny old feeling painting over masking fluid. So let me talk you through then what I'm doing. I have um, plenty of foliage and, and fern tutorials, not least in my book New Botanical Painting, but essentially I, I love a fern because it's one of the simplest things that I paint. So let's have another go here, let's pop one in here. So we start with a stem, I've got green gold here, and then you start at the top and then just tapered lines. 
it's going to be a bit strange to see because we're only going to see some of them but it's very important to sort of paint in full as you would even if there was no masking fluid there because then you'll get a more sort of accurate and honest representation of what you're trying to paint in so yes yeah, so from that central stem tapered lines tip of the brush squish it down and then flip away leaving a nice little leaf like that and we're gonna not just do that we're gonna do all sorts of types of foliage so I've just got loads of different greens mixed up in my palette um, this is cobalt turquoise and mixing in with a sort of sap green it's wonderful for eucalyptus so I am going to I'm just going to sort of begin by painting things quite sort of disparate and separately and then I might go back in afterwards and sort of layer up but my aim is to make sure things sort of overlap out from behind all the uh, all the letters so I'm going to do a slightly sort of different type of eucalyptus today so I've got all my stems painted in and now I'm going to just squash the brush down and make nice rounded shapes The more you can paint things that are sort of emerging and overlapping from the wording, the better, because what we want to do is we want to finish this piece by having the letters so fully surrounded by greenery that when we peel off the masking fluid, the white letters just really clearly stand out. So that's why I'm painting sort of fairly dilute, um, which means I'll be able to layer up and add more layers of greenery. So you can see all I'm doing is just adding extra little discs here, there and everywhere. I might even extend the stem right down so we get a chance to come up from underneath. Okay, and now I'm going to take a different green. I've got Hooker's Green here. This is a really fresh, vibrant green and I'm going to begin a, a new stem coming in there we are making sure it overlaps with the lettering and this time I'm going to do a leaf shape that's a little bit more sort of classic so if you can hear my printer in the background just decided to wake up um, I do all my filming in my office in my studio where I do all my painting but all my stationary work as well and so the printer is the hardest working member of my team most days so so far I've been doing everything with my size zero brush and that's worked quite well but you might want well you might want to sort of either pick up a, a larger brush to get some slightly sort of larger leaf shapes or you might really enjoy lovely fine detail and the size 4 tenths brush is just fantastic for that but for me at the moment the size 0 is doing alright so don't forget that the whole point of this is we're going to be peeling off the masking fluid afterwards so we really need to make sure 
but the letters are surrounded. So even if you don't get it this time round, we'll be layering up and adding more foliage as we go. Our first layer is looking good, um, but now it's time to step things up a notch. I've got some French Ultramarine Blue and I'm going to mix in with some Hooker's Green just to make a new colour and also just a slightly stronger, darker colour. I've also got the colours we mixed up from before, but everything's just a little bit more intense. And I am going to use my smallest brush, my four tenths brush. This is dried, um, so I can paint over the top with a, with a layering effect. And what I really want to do now is just find places. Um, so I'm going to look for the areas where maybe we need a little bit more attention on creating some more green around the letters and also places where I might be evening up the shape sort of around the edge as well. And then I'm just going to add a few more little leaves. And um, the nice thing about painting foliage is kind of anything goes really. There's, there's always a leaf somewhere in nature that looks just like what you have painted. So I'm just, I'm very simply squashing my brush down onto the page. Making sure as before I, I take this opportunity to come up against the edges of the letters like that. make it really really clear now as long as you've painted in a fairly dilute manner the previous layers then you won't struggle too much with adding in this second layer and I think it's quite nice to sort of contrast whatever um, kinds of leaves you've put in beforehand. So we had the, the really sort of rounded eucalyptus. I'm just really trying to get that H, there we go. I just want to make sure I get every edge taken care of. And we're gradually building up a, a lovely, abundant piece of art that is going to look really cool, whether it's in your journal or on a card. This is going to be fun. Okay, so it is time to peel away the masking fluid. So I, I waited for the piece to be entirely dry. Then I washed and dried my hands and now all I'm doing is using my finger to peel away the masking fluid and it's coming away really nice and easily just by, I'm not pressing too heavily, I'm just repeating this sort of stroking technique with my index finger. Um, you can get uh, special tools to help you remove masking fluid or you can use a, some people use a soft rubber but I've always found that just using my finger is fine and look at this and um, you just got to make I mean you'll clearly see at this point whether you manage to get a good coverage of the letters whether you can clearly see March written there but there you go that is your March foliage word art
Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course you can always tag us on social media if you're sharing your artwork. Just search for at De Winton Paper Co on Instagram. And of course if you never want to miss another video then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell. And we'll see you again next time. Bye!